Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm reviewing acrylic paint by De La Roni, and this is the Simply series, which means it is the very basic, not even student grade, but more like amateurs, hobbyists level acrylic paint. And the price of the set is very low. It is around eleven dollars US dollars, I believe. So if we are to compare this uh, paint to something else. The closest I can think of is actually Reeves paints like this. They come in the same kind of set in a box with, with the 12 colors and all of them are also 12 milliliter um, tubes. And I will come back to them in terms of comparing the colors because even if we will take uh, Winsor and Newton paint or PBO um, student grade paints, they are a little bit more expensive than this one um still under 20 dollars but i think around 15 to 19 dollars which is not a very fair comparison so i'll try to um, make um, analogies with both uh, price ranges and still uh, try to correlate it in between uh, paints we know so let's get started first it's a very basic uh, package but uh, well, what is cool that we can see here that this acrylic paint, according to the brand, we can use them with brush, with a palette knife, meaning for impasto techniques, I guess, or just with um, palette knife application. We can also use them for pouring, which I have never actually seen anyone using them for pouring. We can use them for canvas, for paper, or as brand says, even for wood or boards. Let's see the colors and the tubes. So the, the um, package itself it's, it's a plastic it's very flexible it reminds me a lot of the reefs uh, plasticky um, package box but I already threw that away so we have 12 colors I actually like the choice of colors because it makes a perfect color wheel and um, uh, this is a color wheel I made so we go we have three primary colors yellow red and blue and we have cool and warm colors in between them when we mix in and get in from um, yellow to green to blue to violet to red to orange and back to yellow and if we will keep in mind this uh, color wheel we will see that this color palette goes exactly in that direction they have two yellows one is lighter one is a little bit darker uh, two reds one is scarlet and one is magenta violet ultramarine blue two greens and also additional col colors uh, two browns black and of course white what i do not like is that the names of the colors are not universal i'm used to dealing with um, artist grade paints and the name will be primary magenta for example or it will be dark ultramarine or it will be specific like i don't know sub green or deep green or something else and with all these colors it's still okay but with this light brown and brown and black what which exact shape uh, shade of the black is it we don't know but it only matters for some mixing um, formulas and it only makes sense to professionals but for beginners it actually doesn't make sense so it's only my personal note of what i do and do not like and um, let's inspect the tube itself so i want you to compare these tubes these are two chip hobbyist paints, right? Uh, Reeves and uh, Daily Roni. Reeves has a like, plasticky tube and plastic lid. The Daily Roni paint, it feels um, like metal, but it's a very thin ratio of metal and I can squeeze it easily and it feels more plasticky than a metal tube like this. This is also a student grade paint in Pibero and I also have a review if you want to check it later on my channel or my blog, but the quality of the tube is different. You can see I cannot um, twist it as easily as I can twist this one. Uh, also harder to deform and also I can feel that it is like this metal and this is a more professional approach to packaging. But anyway, still the tube is fine. And also what I noticed that all of the tubes all of the colors are sealed and you need to poke it with your lid yes you need to poke it the color will come out immediately and there you go there you have it uh, it's like a color swatch you have on your lid right now but be careful because it can also get messy and you now have the color I will uh, close it for now and back to the tube so there is no, not much details as well, because again, if I will compare it to slightly more expensive bread, still of a student quality, you can see here I have all details about uh, pigment and about light fastness of that uh, pigment. But here, I do not have any of this information. I only have uh, the name of the color and the confirmation that it is not non-toxic and that it is made in England. And that's about it. And that makes sense. Most uh, cheap brands, they do not put, put details about pigments. However, even Reeves, um, cheap brand as well, like $11 for a set, I think, of 12 to 20 um, 
paint tubes and still we can see here uh, the code for the pigment that uses that brand so yes I would expect to see the code of the uh, pigment used to make this paint but I understand that most hobbyist paint most craft paint don't really put it on their label but it's just a note for myself okay so now I will poke them all <laughs> I will not make you watch it I will pause for that and we will begin testing and swatching all the colors uh, I actually want to stop and show you something. I'm, I'm now uh, poking them all, all open and here we go with the red paint. You can see that the magenta, the violet, the blue, a nice smooth uh, soft body texture. And here we go with red. It has a little lumpy texture and it was hard to get out of the um, tube. We will see how it looks on paper, but it's already a warning uh, sign. I'm kind of getting worried a little bit. So yeah, we will see about that paint in a second. Okay, I opened them all, I squid them on my palette. Actually, a few colors were having like sort of lumpiness in them. It's this um, lighter green, uh, scarlet red, um, light and dark brown. Both were not really smooth, so let's see how it will um, affect their application and um, what we're gonna get with them. I will use a slightly wet brush because again that red is a little bit lumpy and I don't really know what to do with it and I will show you I think you can see how lumpy it is and I'm not sure what can I do about it I can try and, and mix it more well the application still is not really affected by the fact that it was a little lumpy but it's not in general great if the paint has this lumps because it may end up on the paper or canvas of course So that was scarlet this is magenta which is you know i think it's magenta i do not use a lot of water but you can see that the colors are quite transparent and not um, very even and consistent in coverage i will show you when i'm done uh, a little closer look of it so you can see better this is violet i'll try to use a thicker um, application paint still feels sort of uh, streaky. I was just doing some swatches for um, Pivier uh, acrylic paint and you, you can see that uh, with the same same brush and also lightly wet brush you can see that this was quite opaque and without visible brush strokes. So yeah, let's see. This is ultramarine. I think it's a little bit light for ultramarine but well that's what we have. I do find it still quite transparent and uneven, all the colors so far that I saw. I'm moving to yellows, I'm just quickly washing and cleaning off my brush, so I'm not making a mess. Well, there are... Um, Yellow seems all right, still a little uneven, but better than more opaque colors, I guess because it's more transparent. It's easier to cover up some imperfections of that color. I do not see a big difference between two yellows, to be honest. One is supposed to be medium and one is supposed to be deep. I guess if I go with a second coat, it does have a little difference already. But it's, the application feels more like glazing than actually layering acrylic paint, and when I use acrylic i always like this thick like honey like consistency and granted this is um, soft body acrylics but they are not that soft body to uh, be that uh, transparent in fact that green lighter green was also a little bit lumpy and i'm not using a super uh, wet brush and yeah and there's still this the strokes are pretty visible and i know that with this brush i can have pretty much invisible brush strokes This is deep green, dark green that they uh, call it. It still feels transparent. I will, I'm trying to just put all the paint I have <laughs> squeezed. And it, it, it does seem more opaque, but still not as opaque as I would expect from acrylic paints. Let's move on to browns. The dark brown is quite lumpy also. Let's see what it does. It's still quite transparent. Yeah, a thicker application 
will get a more opaque color, as you can see, which is great. It means we still have options. Uh, lighter brown also was lumpy, and you can see there were some uh, lumps on paper as well. This is quite opaque, actually. I like that one. I think this one I like the best <laughs> out of all colors. I like that one the best. And of course, black. Black is good, black is opaque. It's sort of like Mars black, I think. Great, and I need to wash my paint, oh, my uh, brush. And I will also swatch white over black because that's the best way to see the opacity of white because of course we will not see it here so uh, give me some time to dry it and i'm showing you the white while this is drying i will just quickly try to uh, make a closer look for you of what these colors look like so you can see they are quite transparent and all the strokes are very visible and they uh, the coverage is not even they're almost all dry already so it's under five minutes to uh, dry to touch for the um, daily roni acrylic paints but I still feel like on the video, maybe it seems like they are more opaque actually than they are in real life. The magenta is quite transparent, the red is quite transparent, violet and blue is quite transparent, and the greens and yellows and even brown is quite transparent. So if you will have uh, an idea of an opaque coverage, you will need to go with thick layers, multiple coats, which also will mean that you need to let it dry properly. But if you're applying thicker uh, layers, I cannot guarantee that it will not crack because as we know thicker layers are prone to cracking and also because this is this is camera and uh, it alters a little bit the uh, colors you will have to do your swatch the magenta does not look as pink as it looks on camera does not look as pink as it looks on the uh, tube as well the colors are not not really matching for example the green the dark green you can see that it's a completely different color yellows i do not see a big difference between them Maybe um, I applied here two layers and I still don't think there is a very, very, very big difference. Still waiting on my black to dry. Give me a few moments. Okay, I think my black is dry. I also used a uh, life hack of all times uh, drying it with a hairdryer. So I think it, it should be good. Let's see. So this is white. Of course, we cannot see it on the paper, but we will try to see how opaque the white is. And we can see one coat is not opaque at all. Two coats are better, much better. And I'm not even letting it dry for now. But I will stop now and let it dry and apply the second coat to see if it will change the opacity. For now, with a little bit thicker application, white is pretty opaque. So at least one color is opaque, but I also now I'm gonna make a swatch for all colors to check, to check their opacity, not just visually on paper, how I perceive it, but how it will actually cover up black color. So I prepared my line of black and um, also now I can see colors drying and they actually dried to a very chalky, um, almost matte finish. I don't really see it reflecting uh, a lot of light. So yeah, it's uh, it's pretty flat. It's pretty flat, not as uh, um, gloss as regular acry acrylics are when they're dry because regular acrylics dries to pretty um, glossy appearance, I would say. Now I'm back to my paints and I will try to test the opacity the red is just the red is just horrible and uh, um, I can try to salvage it probably if I will use a little bit of um, gag uh, let me try first with how it is lumpy as it is and then now I will drop some gag and I will mix it with red and to see if it actually will make a difference I need a little bit more red now because when you have such a small tube, there is nothing really you can do about the paint that is lumpy inside the tube. And this is something that I actually see with these cheap paints, um, uh, acrylic or gouache, quite often. Lumpiness or uh, another problem, they will come out with a pigment and binder separated. So this is with a little uh, with gag, definitely uh, less lumpy and still very transparent, right? I'm not doing two coats for now because I need to see one coat. What does it do in terms of um, opacity, transparency, magenta, very, very transparent. Next, we have violet. I would say semi um, opaque, semi transparent. Nice. If it will be like two layers, it will be pretty opaque. 
ultramarine blue also with a few layers i think it can be pretty opaque now we can still see the underlying uh, black but i think it has potential medium uh, yellow how they call it pretty transparent yes that's what to be expected from a yellow uh, dark yellow also pretty transparent but i think with a few um, coats it can be more opaque than um, medium yellow the medium green was also quite lumpy let's see that's actually quite good semi-opaque and i think with a few coats can be um opaque i have to say the good thing about this uh, paints so far and which is good for beginners especially that they are not super fast drying on palette they stay pretty uh, wet for this like 10 i think minutes that i'm working with them the dark green uh, can be also pretty opaque for now it's not completely <laughs> not 100 percent i would say light brown is a little lumpy i'll just try some more fresh paint good nice with um mostly dry brush it almost opaque and i need dark brown yes dark brown is pretty opaque but it is also lumpy so the stroke is very uneven okay what i can say to conclude none of the colors are completely opaque which is um which makes sense because they are cheap paints it means that there are fewer um, pigment uh, versus water and binder ratio they're like war i don't want to say worse pigments but uh, fewer pigment load and also maybe lower quality pigments used in these paints this is why they are pretty transparent as you can see even the colors that i thought will be um, more opaque like violet and ultramarine or greens or even browns as you can see they are drying a little bit lighter and they're drying and more transparent than they were when I applied a first coat, I will show you closer so you can see. I think it's a failed test on opacity, to be honest. But um, the upside of it is that you can also go and apply more layers if you really want to cover up darker um, area on your um, canvas or paper. But uh, that's that can be problematic because with acrylics we paint from dark colors to light colors, so we need light colors to be able to cover up uh, some dark colors. But um, there can be also a solution for that. And a solution for that can be uh, covering first the black with white and then with the color you need. For example, here you can see if I apply uh, medium green here, it's not transparent anymore because a white naturally makes any color more opaque and it will help you uh, solve the problem. But in that case, you will soon need um, a new tube of white because you will be using it too much. Now let's test how they are in mixing and blending. For the mixing, I'm normally using the most basic combination. It's blue and green. So here we have one blue, it's ultramarine, and we have two yellows, which is um, the medium yellow, how they call it, and um, deep yellow, how they also call it. And I will try to mix with both of them just to see what different, different colors it can make. So first is with um, medium yellow, and second will be with the deep yellow which I forgot to squeeze, but yeah, here we go. Well, I didn't see the big difference with these colors, actually, right when we were swatching them, and I don't see pretty much any difference. Yeah, this is a little bit muddier um, than this one, but I think these two yellows are pretty much the same, so I don't know why we have different names on them and why we have two different colors. We could have had lighter and darker yellow or yellow and orange. So yeah, on parts of yellows, I think I am dissatisfied with that set. But if you are using lots of um, greens and you're mixing and you're using lots of yellows, this is a bonus. You got uh, twice as much uh, yellows as you would get with any regular set. So if you're a fan of yellow, this is a set for you <laughs> because you will have two tubes of yellow. Now let's try some blending. Again, I will do a very basic blend just to show you. And unfortunately, I have to use the red because, well, I don't have any other reds in my uh, set. But yeah, that's a very miserable red here. And magenta. Quickly 
clean your brush and then go in with some some dark orange as they call it do wet the brush a little bit so I can move it around the paint better Even with the wet brush, I do not really see the colors blending super nicely. Yeah, they do blend, um, but that's not kind of perfect because if I add a little bit more water to make the paint flow better and spread better, it immediately lifts it up and makes it streaky. So yeah, I'm not sure if I am a big fan of what's going on, but especially with this red that I cannot even, I don't even know what to do with this red. I'm covering the magenta because it does not work even if it's supposed to be um, like the same color wheel the same um, palette it does not really work with these paints I need to add more yellow and I'll try the light yellow maybe in blending it will make sense Blend from the bottom up. Yeah, again, uh, I'd like you to compare it to another paint, for example, to uh, the bear. Um, acrylics which are slightly more expensive but they also better performant I find so for blending techniques yes the daily Roni has a big advantage because it's drying slower a little bit still fast as all acrylic but a little bit slower than um, some professional paints but for blending and coverage I don't really I, I'm not sure let's see just for coverage I don't really know that I'm, I'm using the very wet brush already and of course it creates then the washy color but I don't see I don't see yet an option how to make a good total coverage of paper or canvas, and that's not even canvas, that's paper, right? With a solid color without using lots of water and making it look nice. So yeah, here I used quite a bit of water. Of course, the color is much lighter, and yeah, I do not have much brush strokes, which is great. But the blending is still very questionable for me. First, of course, maybe I got unlucky because. Uh, some paints are lumpy, but also the blending process takes far more time than it, it could take with other paints with the same color palette, and um, I think I do not really like it. Mixing, again, I was maybe unlucky with these two yellows. Well, yeah, maybe I wasn't lucky. Let's taste, uh, test something else. Let's test uh, the yellow and the uh, red, for example, or even, yeah, uh, not, not the red because I have a horrible red, right, but the magenta. And some white just to make like a more pastel looking color just to see where it leads us it's supposed to be some sort of orange color but because we add in white it will be more pale I think it's a nice color it has some opacity to it but at the same time if we compare it to just straight uh, magenta for example right like this this color looks uh, not pale to me because we added white but it looks a little muddy as well as these two colors they look a little muddy so mixing is possible but be careful and test first and swatch it first because there is a chance that mixed colors will look a, a little bit muddy and i used a clean brush and oh uh, you saw that i squeezed the paint directly here so there was no additional brown or black or whatever that can get muddy so let's go back to our paints and somehow summarize what we have here we have good cheap paints for absolute beginners and um, maybe if you want to paint with your kids a few times of course if uh, you have just low budget but you're willing to try painting yes why not if you uh, can afford a little bit a little bit more expensive paints already there is a, a lot of paints that you can use even Winsor and Newton um, Galleria set which is 
absolutely amazing. One of my favorite paints, Spencer Newton. They're also not that expensive for 10, um, uh, 10 color palette or Pibeo that are also not very expensive compared to Daily Rowney. But again, if you bought this paints, uh, try to use very simple painting ideas. Don't go with portraits or very detailed landscape or a lot of uh, color mixing. Well, try to work with the colors that you have. Also, absolutely make some swatches because as you uh, saw, I found out that a few of the colors, like four colors were uh, lumpy. That means that you cannot really use them, um, which is also another downside of buying cheap paint because yes, you spend $11, but I practically cannot use this red and it's a whole, <laughs> it's a whole thing, <laughs> right? But I cannot use it because I can show you the how lumpy and how many lumps it is and i tried to mix it with a uh, gag and it did not help so there is no really um uh, <laughs> safe options for that uh, now um i still uh, as i said think that as a cheap paint uh, reeves or uh daily roni a great option to start just to start as soon as you understand how the um how the color wheel works how the color theory works you will understand that oh i need a more opaque colors or oh, i need right because we saw they are very, very transparent or oh, i wanted to go more in details then you need to upgrade to winston newton to liquitex to prepare to um even to amsterdam amsterdam uh, even if i showed you um oh no, i didn't show you that time uh they also where is my amsterdam oh, i will show on a big one they also have a plasticky um tubes but the paint is great i'm using it all the time and i i find it very good so just for a few times you can use daily rolling but if you have a little bit a few more dollars and if you're truly willing to learn painting i would opt for something more professional even maybe from daily rolling brand uh, or look for system three they have also student grade uh, paint and they also have a body uh, paint which is artist grade so i would look for them and this uh, can be your uh, play around paint or for your kids but not for professional painting and not uh, and it will not get you through learning all the techniques that you may be using with acrylic paint i hope it was not too discouraging um i will go back again to show you the colors they're all dry now you can see them the colors are quite vibrant. They, are, as I said, they are matte. They are not very consistent. They are very transparent, but they work well on paper. And we found a, um, a life hack to make them more opaque by using a little white. Maybe not mixing. Maybe not blending. Flat colors, preferably, and um, using just straight colors out of the tube would be great. And that's it. Uh, that's it for now. I hope that was a useful review for you. And that was the Simply Acrylic Paint Set. Thank you.